Hi guys, I'm back with another video and this time I am talking about how I'm saving for a house at 27. Um, I just want to quickly say thank you to anyone who's watched my videos before this. If you haven't watched the videos or any of the videos to do with biomedical science or with Locomin, I'll put some links down below and you can check them out. Um, there's also a video on there on um, my holiday to Cyprus. So if anyone's interested, check out the links down below. But yeah, thank you so much to anyone who's coming back to watch them or to watch this video video and for anyone who's new I hope it's helpful and I hope you enjoy the content that I have. I've got my little hot water bottle here before I go right ahead I get so cold um, and you know as it's saving I'm by myself in the house right now it's not cold enough that I can put the heating on by myself so save money, save electricity save on bills yeah so this video i'm going to be talking about how i'm saving for a house at 27 so for those of you who've got me on instagram i asked a question on instagram um to see if there's anybody who wanted me to do a video um, on how i'm saving for a house and i actually had quite a lot of responses so i had to make the video and i'm really excited because i like making these kind of videos because it's at a point in my life where this is what i'm focused on this is what i'm trying to do and achieve and it's just exciting for me to share that and also to learn from other people who might be in the same position because not all of us um were able to buy a house at 21 or at 22 or at 25 or at 27 and not at 28 i'm 28 in a few months so it's in, it's nice to see that you don't have to achieve or have bought a house at a certain age it happens when in your life you're at that point you're ready to buy a house so i wanted in this video just to you know give people motivation for if you are saving to keep going if you're starting to save it's a great time to start you never know where you're going to be in a year's time from now you just have to put in um the discipline put in the effort put in the work and then hopefully you'll be able to achieve the goal that you want to achieve the money that you want to save for your house or whatever but yeah it all depends and like i always i always think saving um or saving for a house very much depends on your circumstances so if i could give an example for me i am african i come from an african household where sometimes i do have to help out financially now i can't speak for all africans but i know that a lot of us sometimes we do have to help out our family financially so that sometimes means that we can't save as much as we would like to or as much as we could but also it might be um a case of somebody in your family gets ill you have to take care of them so you can't work as much as you can because you have to help out you have to look after them so obviously you can't do any overtime you can't do the work you're not getting paid as much so it all depends also it can be like unexpected situations that um sort of store you a little bit so it's all very much circumstantial um how much income you've got coming in and how much your outgoings are but there is ways that you can make it work you can make saving work it might not necessarily mean that you'll buy a house next year or a house in two years time but as long as you start saving now and that's your goal you're good like you have to do it you're going to do it it doesn't matter what age you are there's people that are in their 40s that still haven't bought a house so it's never too late me and my high bun have spoken let me just get into it first of all i want to say that as much as i think it's important to have a goal i think you don't always necessarily have to have a goal that you want to achieve in terms of saving and the reason i say this is because you want saving to also be a little bit fun, not just stressful, like you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. Um, so if you set a specific goal or a specific amount or a specific time that you want to save this house by, and if you don't achieve it, that might sort of knock you a little bit. And you don't want that. You don't want to be disheartened or overwhelmed or um, do something that will stop you from saving or make you think, oh, I'm never going to do this. It's never going to be possible. Like you don't want that. So it's like anything it's in moderation some, some things really require you to have a goal of when they need to be done when they need to be achieved but not everything is that like for me if you've seen my last video i mentioned that i have put a little goal on myself of saving a thousand pounds plus um from august 2020 to august 2021 that's something that i've set myself but that doesn't necessarily mean that by august next year i have to have bought a house that's not what's happening so I've set myself a goal to do that, to see if I can challenge myself to um, be able to save that much by that time. The only reason I've done that is because I feel like I'm in a situation or in a place in my life now where I can do that. Previously to this, I wasn't really able to do that. So like, again, it comes back to how much you can actually save and what you can actually do depending on how much you've got coming in and what you've got going out. Another reason why I haven't specifically set a goal, I know that I want to buy a house in the next couple of years or in the next few years 
but I haven't necessarily said it has to be this time is because I haven't spoken to a mortgage advisor yet. Um, me and my partner are saving separately, so I'm saving and he's also saving. And then when the time comes, we're going to put our savings together and buy a house. But we haven't spoken to a mortgage advisor yet, and that will be happening in the next few months. But when that happens, that might change the plan that I have in terms of my savings. I might have to, you know, work that little bit more to save that little bit more, or I can actually um, cut back on my savings. I'm not going to do that, but I pro possibly, no, no, I'm not going to do that actually. But yeah, like I haven't spoken to a mortgage advisor, so I don't necessarily know what the situation will be when I'm ready to buy a house. Obviously, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of reading into what you need to buy a house, what you need to buy a mortgage, what potentially your fees will be, your taxes, everything else. I do a lot of reading into that, but I don't exactly know where I am in terms of um, my actual finances. So once I know that... Um, then I can obviously set myself a goal of like, okay, I need to save this much by this time. So this is what I'm going to do. But right now it's more about saving as much as I can. And also the fact that you can't actually get like a 5% deposit mortgage at the moment or a 10% deposit deposit mortgage. So it's literally just a case of trying to save as much as I can. Another thing I believe you have to be with savings is realistic. Be realistic about your circumstances. Be realistic about your situation. Be realistic about about how much you can actually save and um, be realistic about what you can actually achieve like you don't want to just be out there setting goals and not actually have a plan or have an idea or how of how you're gonna do it or how you're gonna achieve it like you want to take a little bit of pressure off yourself because anything can happen in the time that you give yourself that might set you back so just be realistic about what it is that you're trying to do what it is that you're trying to achieve and what could go wrong or what could not go wrong you know i think one of the biggest things with saving is having discipline so like i've said i'm going to be saving a thousand pounds a month but in that time i'm saving a thousand pounds a month but also for the next year i'm living a very low cost life i'm almost going to be living well within my means but almost below my means like i don't want to be living above my means because there's no really any real reason to but also it will maximize how much i can save in that time so what can i achieve in a year like it'll be amazing to know or to see what i could possibly achieve in a year and obviously i'm going to document that and see where i am now to where i am in a year's time and i'm excited to see that journey through so this is why i am holding myself accountable to do this and stuff like this gets me really excited like i just love to i love doing things that um, help me better myself put me in a better position in my future because I don't come from a place where we were brought up wealthy we weren't rich like it's almost like we've had to sort of work really hard and sort of struggle for everything and I don't want that for my future and I also don't want that for my children so when I set them up set myself up to be in a better place than where I've come from how I've grown up also working with a positive mindset of you know things are attainable if you work hard for them if you put in the effort like nothing's just gonna fall on like a silver platter for you like you have to work hard for it so that's what i'm excited for so anyway my saving techniques or my savings how i'm doing it um what i'm doing i'm gonna get into it now so the way that i look at my savings is um out of sight out of mind and what i mean by that is if it's not in sight i won't spend it if i don't see it i won't spend it i won't think i've got it so it's almost like what happens is when i get paid my bills will go out straight away i like all my bills to come out at the start of the month at the beginning of the month some things obviously you can't help it um because you set up a direct debit um halfway through the month and it'll come out on that day every month but as much as i can all my bills will come out at the start of the month and then um straight away i'll put in right now it's a thousand pounds into my savings but on top of that i'm also doing the 200 pounds help to buy but that'll probably stop soon i'll explain that later but yeah straight away into my savings and then what i'm also going to try and do in this year that i've set myself is to see if i can live on 500 pounds a month so what you can do is obviously work out what your bills are at 27 you really should know how much you're paying for your bills what your outgoings are in total every month and how much you've got coming in if you're in a stable job work that all out and then at least you can set yourself a goal of like okay i'm gonna save this much a month every single month and then just put it in like a savings account um a yeah put it away put it somewhere you can't see it just out of sight 
out of sight, out of mind. Um, if at one point in the month I go over my um, budget for that month or for that week, then the next month it's almost like, okay, I have to spend, um, find a way to um, replace that in a way. So spend less um, in order to make up what's been overspent. And then that way you stay on budget. So actually another thing I'm going to do for the next year, because right now I have just moved, I've just started a new job. I've been there one week. Um, I say new job obviously if you've seen my previous video I'm a locum but right now I'm doing bank work and I've just started um, my first week so once I've done at least a month of that I'll know exactly how much my income is for at least a month and then from then on I can budget from that money how much I can save and how much um, I'm left over after all my bills have gone out my savings have gone out and how much I can live off of like you have to stay on top of budgeting I believe and if you're not into it it can be a bit ugh, but if you're not into it get into it try and get into it I think it's a good way to sort of keep track of your money keep track of where your money is going and how much you can spend the here there and everywhere right okay so how am I actually saving so I opened a Help to Buy ISA last year. The Help to Buy ISAs are no longer available. So if you're thinking of opening one, you're not going to be able to. So I opened my Help to Buy ISA literally on the last day that Help to Buys were available. So this was on the 30th of November and I opened it with the maximum, which was £1,200. And since then, apart from one month, I have put in £200 a month, which is the maximum that you can actually save in a help to buy every single month. You can't put in more than £200. So if my maths is correct, take away a month, I will have, by the end, by the time the one year is up, £3,200 in my help to buy, um, which I can put towards a deposit for a house. So with the help to buy, you can save up to £12,000, which will give you the maximum bonus of £3,000 from the government, so which is 25%. But if you were to save £12,000, pounds in a help to buy ISA it will take you four and a half years uh, to save into that if you had started obviously a lot sooner than I started I actually also opened a lifetime ISA just a little bit before I opened my help to buy ISA and the reason I did that was because I wasn't really sure which one I was going to use um, for my house deposit so you can only use one of them um, with the bonus from the government but I wasn't really sure which one I was going to use but I read up on the lifetime ISA and you had to have it open for at least a year before you can use it including the bonus on a house deposit so i made sure i just opened it with one pound to start with i haven't actually put much more into my lifetime isa but the lifetime isa that i have i can actually transfer my help to buy um isa into my lifetime isa but transferring and using um lifetime isas and help um help to buy isas there is some um restrictions on some lifetime ISAs if you can if you can transfer a help to buy um, ISA into it or not so research that if that's something that you'd want to consider so I got the help to buy ISA at the time it was easy because I could save 200 pounds a month nice and easy but what might be helpful for people who've got a help to buy ISA now and are still saving into it it's worth being aware that you can't use your help to buy ISA bonus from the government as part of your exchange deposit. So exchange deposit is the deposit that you give to the seller when exchanging the contract, um, but it's different to a mortgage deposit. So your government bonus actually comes after you've signed the contract and actually after you've paid um, the deposit. So that's something to be aware of. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna save 12,000 pounds and the extra 3,000 pound bonus from the government is gonna help me reach, for example, my 10% deposit to give to the seller, that's not gonna help you. You actually have to look for 3,000 pounds from elsewhere. So that's something to be well aware of, which I wasn't actually aware of when I was opening the help to buy because unless you actually read it and research it it's not very clear it's not actually explained that um, in the adverts that you see they won't say oh but you can't use this for your um, exchange deposit which is actually very annoying we need this information why can't people just be like just tell us everything we are 27 we want to know everything we need answers okay um, yes yeah, so that's something to be aware of so now I'm going to move on to the Lifetime ISA. So the Lifetime ISA, you can save up to £4,000 in it every year. You can buy a property up to uh, £450,000. There is a catch though. Um, you have to make sure that if you open a Lifetime ISA, you know that you're strictly only going to use it for your first home deposit or for retirement. If you take out the money for anything else other than those two things, you will get um, a penalty of 25%. And that could actually end up 
making you lose more than you've actually put in at the moment during the pandemic so from march 2020 to april 2021 they've actually decreased that penalty to 20 percent so essentially you're actually only losing the bonus and not losing any more than that and the reason i say that is because the bonus is actually paid to you on a monthly basis so you're seeing that bonus going into your account every single month so if you had the penalty and you've got the bonus they're essentially trying to get back the bonus and they'll end up getting a little bit a little bit more back at 25 percent. whereas at 20 percent, it works out as they're just getting the bonus back because they obviously don't want to lose the bonus if you actually work it out properly you can actually save so i mentioned before that it will take you three years to save £12,000 into a lifetime ISA but there is actually a way around that that you can actually save um, this £12,000 in less than two years and the way that you do it is this if in March 2019 you put in £4,000 and maxed your ISA allowance of £4,000 that year the following month is a new year for the ISAs which is April 2019 you can put in another £4,000 which would mean you've now got £8,000 and then you'd be getting £2,000 from the government as your 25% bonus which would mean the next year which would be April 2020 you could have put in another £4,000 and that would have meant that you've made up uh, £12,000 and then you'll get an extra £1,000 so in total £3,000 bonus from the government making up a £15,000 deposit for a house which you can actually use as part of your exchange deposit but in doing that you've done it in under two years rather than saving 200 pounds a month for four and a half years so it's a lot quicker but if you're thinking of saving into a lifetime isa long term it's worth opening one now and putting in at least one pound there is different accounts where you can put in one pound or you can start with ten pound but start with one pound for an account that you can open with one pound and just keep saving in from then have it open for a year and then from a year you can make a decision but worst case scenario if you don't use your lifetime isa in a year or ever for um for retirement or for your first property then you're losing what just less than a pound which is which is nothing in the grand scheme of things so other things i've done to save for a deposit so my car um i used to have a car on finance and i got rid of that a couple of years ago and the car that i got was a second hand car that has been so good to me so good to me and it was such a blessing because it's been really really cheap to run insurance is very low petrol is very low it's obviously a very small engine as well but it's um it's got me around where i've needed to i didn't really need to be on finance at the time when i got my finance car i needed to that's the only way i could have had a car um and i needed to be on finance to get a car that was um efficient that was um what's the word reliable um so i needed i needed to have that once my circumstances changed i changed my car to a cheap car easy to run cheap to run cheap tax cheap insurance um low cost on petrol and that's one way that i have saved a lot of money rather than paying 250 pounds a month for a car on finance i am now paying about okay so my tax is about 14 pounds it runs on depending how much petrol i need um it's very very low so yeah that's something you can think about find ways that you can cut costs um, in your ways of living another thing that i have done or actually you know i will be doing in the next year is cutting down on expensive holidays for the last few, year, few years i must admit i've been going on holidays because it was the only time in my life that i've been able to go on holidays as much as i could to actually enjoy life like as much as you want to save and look to the future you have to also find time to enjoy the money that you're making and it's only in the last few years that i've actually been able to enjoy the money that i have been making and it's like well this the only chance i have um i did that i enjoyed it i went on holiday and holidays are always good everybody wants to go on holiday but um from now on obviously i've had to, i'm gonna have to be very strict with myself where i won't be going on expensive holidays if um my friends turn around they want to go on some really really expensive holiday it's gonna be hard but i'm gonna have to say no i can't go on holiday like at the end of the day you got to remember why you're doing what you're doing people are all on different journeys different paths that saving for different reasons or not saving for different reasons but you've got to do what you've got to do me and my friends were meant to be going to the philippines this year and obviously the pandemic happened and we weren't able to go but actually um this brings me on to talking about how saving during a pandemic has been so helpful like it's been a good thing i know it's been a bad thing for a lot of people it's been a good opportunity to save
it's been a really good opportunity to save because lockdown happened we weren't going anywhere during lockdown we weren't buying a lot of things during lockdown we weren't going out during lockdown so there was a lot of time to save a lot of money to be saved um especially um for for example in my career i've had to work all the way through this pandemic and it's given me the chance to be able to save more than i normally would just because the outgoings were a lot less than the money that was coming in there might come a point in your saving journey where you have to try and live below your means if you have to like not necessarily like completely below below your means but live within your means but slightly below if you can i mean that's what i'm gonna do for the next year it's just live below my means like there's a lot of things that i don't really always have to do always have to buy always need to have so for me that's where i'm going to be cutting my costs and putting all that extra money into savings like i've already mentioned i don't need to go on holiday another thing that i've cut money on is having a cheaper phone before this i was on a monthly contract but now i've actually switched to a sim only contract i'm paying 14 pounds for unlimited data but you have to search around if you've got a phone contract that's coming to an end um make sure that you negotiate with your phone company or otherwise if they can't do that then find another network, find another company, but you don't need to buy a new phone every couple of years, do you? These phone companies have a way of, you know, making you want to have a new phone every two years, but there's no need for that. If your phone's still working, then just go on a SIM only contract, save your money. What can you do um, to sort of start you off, to see where you are financially um, in your savings journey? The one thing that you can do is to work out your net worth statement. So your net worth statement is basically working out what you own and taking away what you owe, and that will give you a value. This is either going to be a positive or a negative value. Hopefully it's a positive value because that means you have more to you than you actually owe which is great a negative value will tell you that okay this is what you need to work on this is what you need to pay off so essentially I'm, i'd make an assumption that you haven't got any savings if your uh, net worth statement is in the negatives so at this point you then have to figure out okay what can i do to get out of this negative state basically you need to work out how can i get out of this negative state how do i save money how do i um, increase my the money coming in and how do I, if you've got debt, how do you sort out your debt? Because that's another thing that you want to do when you're thinking of buying a house. You want to be in good credit. You want to have a good credit score. So credit scores will affect um, what mortgages you can get in the future. So the app that I'm using right now to track my savings is an app called Savings Goal. And it basically allows you to put in different goals, um, put in how much you want to save, buy when, um, or how long you want it to take you. And then it will give you or it'll break it down for you into how much you can save daily how much you can save weekly how much you can save monthly and how long it'll take you to or how long sorry how long you've got left before your deadline that you set for yourself to save this goal and it's really handy just to keep an eye on how you're doing with your savings but obviously like i said i don't really like to see regularly how much i've got in there like i'll keep track of it every so often like you've got to see where you are to keep you excited to keep you motivated you've got to balance it out balance between looking at it to give you motivation enthusiasm enthusiasm like oh yes i'm doing it and also like okay i don't want to look at it because i don't want to know how much i've got and then if i don't know how much i've got then i won't be thinking okay i've got this much of like obviously it's good to have emergency funds but you don't want to be like okay i've got this so if i ever spend this night then it's fine it's like just be disciplined and keep your eye on the goal um another thing that I did do when I was obviously saving or when I have been saving is shop around for a good savings account or bank account current account and um, the reason I say this is because with your help to buy ISA which is which at the time is all I had um 200 pounds was all I could save but obviously I could save a little bit more outside of that so I had a little bit extra money that was just sitting in a bank account but not actually gaining any interest whatsoever but it's like if you're going to leave it there for a year or two you may as well find an account Account or a savings account that will that will allow you to gain interest on your money so at least at the end of it instead of just having say you've saved a thousand pounds you end up with like 1100 you know so try and find an account that you can um, gain interest on so what happened when I, when I opened my help to buy is I had to open a current account with the bank that I was open my help to buy with which at the time it was Barclays Bank and I thought okay I don't want to use my normal account to put the extra money that I have in I want to keep that separate to um, my savings so I put it so I put my extra money on top of my 200 pounds into my 
Barclays current account, but this current account had zero, zero, zero interest. I just saw my money like every time I put it in, but it's not gaining anything. I was like, okay, I want something that would give me a little bit of, little bit of interest. So I looked at savings accounts and the ones that were worth it to me were ones that they, that had to be open for at least like five years to get a good um, interest return on them. And I was just thinking to myself, okay, I might actually need to dip into my savings at some point. I don't really know. I always have in the back of my mind when I'm saving is that an emergency could happen. So I want to be able to dip into it. So I want it to be easy access. But if I want to get the interest, some of these savings accounts were asking for the money not to be touched for five years. So I was like, okay, that's not for me. So I shopped around again and I actually found Nationwide Flexi Direct account, which was offering 5% on your um, money up to 2500 so I was okay there was obviously other terms and conditions into it I'm not going to go into it now but that for me came out as the best option so I switched over to um, from Barclays Bank I had left my help to buy but switched over my Barclays Bank current account to a nationwide um, current account and on top of that is gaining interest every single month which is good to see rather than my money just sitting there not doing nothing and also with my nationwide I can actually go into it and take the money out if and when I need to. I'm obviously trying to not like I said out of sight out of mind i try not to look at it too much but it's there and it's gaining interest and that's what you need to do if you're saving and you've got a little bit extra and if you're not if you're not going to be buying a house in the next two or three years then maybe it is worth looking into a long-term high interest savings account um but if you are going to be buying the next um sort of couple of years then it's worth looking at your easy access options if you want but if you know you're not going to touch it for two years then fine have a look at savings account with good interest but that's something that you should do if you've got money that's just sitting there try and build your money on the money that you have and you don't really have to do anything for it win-win and what i'm going to do is actually um in the next couple of videos because i've got so many saving tips and so many budgeting tips that i really want to share i'm going to share them in the next couple of videos just because i feel like there's going to be a lot so i may as well cover it in two videos instead of one another thing that i'm going to say is if you can live at home um, with your family then that is an option that you can have to save a little bit more if I had the option to live at home I would I'm not in a position to be able to live at home because of where I work but if that was an option and my family lived down the road I would definitely consider it just because you can save so much because renting is expensive all that money that you're putting into renting can actually go into a mortgage right so yeah so that's something that you can think about if like I I know that have moving back home after you've been to like uni or you've already moved out it can be quite hard but if you can bite the bullet swallow your pride and move back home then do it because it will save you so much money and it will be well worth it I know at like 27 28 30 you don't really want to be thinking okay I'm gonna go live at home with mum um but if you have to do it you have to do it it doesn't matter what other people may think about it it literally is down to what you're trying to achieve you need to have your eye on your goal so a really good website that's really helped me with all my research or my reading and stuff like that is Money Saving Expert. I will put the link down below if you want to read up on anything. It's really good for, it talks about savings, it talks about mortgages, it talks about help to buy, it talks about credit cards, it talks about, it talks about credit score. So it's well worth um, having a look around on that website for, if you've never heard of it, um, really, really good website and I'd highly recommend it. Okay, so if... Um, you know owning a house or getting on the property ladder seems like something so far out of reach don't forget that you do have options you do have options on how you can get on the property ladder so look at your options on how um you can get on the property ladder and then that would obviously give you an idea of what kind of deposit you'd be needing to work with what kind of um financial situation that you need to be in so the options that you might look at is shared ownership again that's that's talked about on money saving expert if you just google that you'll find it um you can look at um, buying a house with a friend or buying a house with a family member or if you're lucky enough to get help from family financially that can um you know help you with a deposit that's great um you obviously have mentioned the lifetime isa obviously other types of savings if you're looking to buy in like 15 years time you can look at um stocks and shares um investing so many options um you can also look at equity loans that again the help to buy scheme um does and i really hope that this video has given you some ideas on how you can start your savings journey but i also want to actually yes i want to know if anyone has used um the help to buy to buy a property 
did you know about the fact that you can't use the help to buy bonus at the exchange stage that's something i really want to know if anyone's gone through that please let me know how was the transactions how was the exchange at the time um let me know because i'd be really interested to find out like did you know about it did you not know about it if you're saving keep going if you want to start saving start now that's great and i will be giving more saving tips in my next few videos so keep a lookout for that but um what you can do in the meantime is subscribe to my channel and we can ride the wave together but yeah i will see you guys in my next video i think i'm gonna end it here and yeah see you later mm -hmm.